Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 6th, and it is a slightly chilly, rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We'll take it. What option do we have, right? March. How did that happen? Well, spring is coming, and I'm looking forward to it this year for sure. For sure. This feels like a very... This feels like a special spring because we're emerging from so many things. Of course, we're entering into other things, so... Just life. I am smoking uh, Bing's favorite. And today I have something a little different. This is uh, Esoterica Dunbar. This is uh, was a gift from my buddy, I believe it was from Signal Man Tony in Rhode Island. Uh, great guy. And uh, he sent me a very generous gift a while back, uh, including the, uh, the Dunbar. It's good stuff. And eight o'clock coffee, and I just dropped my coaster. I'm in the basement. I don't really need a coaster. I'll pick it up though. Yeah. Just one of these little foam mouse pad sort of things that I got at a trade show a while back. I also put a, um, well, calling it a shade or a blind is a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit silly. I put a piece of cardboard in the window, <laughs> so I'm hoping that helps with the sun streaming in and that odd uh, smoke screen that was developing. We'll see. Uh, <clears throat> been a good weekend. I'm back to work tomorrow actually going to work tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. It's been a while. I'll let you know how it goes. So this morning I, I got up and <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I have a routine. Yeah, the smoke's still building up, isn't it? Oh well. I have I have a very I shouldn't say strict routine, but it is for me. I, I, you know, get up and I do certain things in the morning. And I usually get up around six, uh, shower, all that kind of stuff. And then I go down and leave the dogs out. Well, I was up a little bit late last night. I was watching, uh, Daughter of a Drac, no, Dracula's Daughter. Uh, great movie. 1930. Six, I believe, about five years after Dracula, uh, the original, the go see Dracula, um, tells the story of Dracula's daughter, <clears throat> who's trying to shed the curse of Dracula, um, rather unsuccessfully. But it's a it's a good movie. So I slept late. I didn't get up until seven. Had to deal with the dogs. Normally, so I had to do that first. Normally, I let them out. They're out for about five minutes. They come in and everybody's happy. This morning, they decided they wanted to not come in. So, they, you know, half an hour. So I wound up uh, putting on some YouTube videos to pass the time while I waited for them and uh, got sucked into a couple of things. And yeah, they finally came in and I got showered and everything. And, and, and then I wanted to finish that video. and. One of the videos that I watched this morning was from Northwest uh, pipe smoker uh, Tom, and Tom had a, a really nice video about his Ukrainian roots uh, that I recommend you you go check out. It's his latest video, but he was talking about uh, a family history. His his aunt had one of his elderly aunts had had written this book, a compiled history of the family. I thought, wow, that's really cool. 
And he kind of touched on something that I've been interested in for a long time. You know, he said, you got to remember that every one of us <clears throat> is a product of their mother and father meeting. And as you go back in time, this, this group, well, as you go forward in time, actually, this, this, the, the, the relatives expand, right? You, you wind up with this very large collection of relatives. My sister has been doing a this Ancestry.com thing. Looking into her own family history. And I've really enjoyed this because I was very close to my maternal grandparents. And they were full of stories about things that happened uh, to the family in, in the past. You know, and, and I've always been fascinated by this and when you start to, to to go back in time and you realize you know this this person here wound up with this person here uh you know sometimes from very different countries uh, how did that happen you know and, and and what are the odds that those people would have even met let alone married and had children that ultimately in a line lead to you One of my favorite stories on my side of the family, and there's my side and my wife's side. Uh, now we don't have children, so it's it's kind of irrelevant. But um, for me to be sitting here right now, my great great grandparents, uh, the the woman was a, and I, I don't remember the name, I'm sorry. But she was, she stowed away on a boat. Um, she, she was a stowaway. The man who ultimately became my great, great grandfather was from a uh, well-to-do family. Uh, he was involved in a happening, and I'm not going to go into details because it's a little embarrassing, but essentially he had to get out of the country. Um, or he would have been in trouble. So they put him on a boat to America. They, the, the stowaway was discovered, and uh, he said, we'll, we'll take care of her. Don't, don't worry about it. We'll pay for her passage. And they met in this, you know, highly unlikely way, you know, two people that never would have met one another. Uh, and they, they eventually married. And that's, you know, my family line comes from that. What are the odds of that happening? They're very low. My own parents met. My father was from um, New York, you know, close to the New York, Pennsylvania border, but very unlikely that he ever would have come to Philadelphia where my mother lived. My mother uh, and her family would vacation in Wildwood, New Jersey every year. Now this was, if any of you know Wildwood, New Jersey, it's it's a crazy place now. It's It's where kids go to drink and have fun. Uh, <clears throat> when I was growing up, it was much more family oriented, and uh, when she was growing up, it was even more family oriented. You know, it was just a nice beach town, and you know there were there was there was a boardwalk, there were uh, rides, you know, roller coasters, things like that. But it was uh, calm, and. My father got a summer job running one of the rides in Wildwood. And that's how my parents met. Uh, my mother was, you know, apparently waiting in line for this ride and, and, and that's how it happened. So, you know, what are the odds? My wife's family, her parents, uh, I love this story. 
never met. Uh, my mother-in-law was, I believe, one of the maids of honor in a wedding. She might have just been a friend of the bride, but she, she was at a wedding. My father-in-law had a friend who said, hey, this wedding's happening. Why don't we crash it? You know, free party. And that's how they met. Very unlikely two people come together like that. And here I am. And you all have similar stories, and here you are. What are the odds of us being here? And if you project this back in time, you know, three, four, five generations, if, if you were calculating the odds, you would say, well, this event, this, this event of you sitting here right now is impossible. And yet here we are. It's fascinating. I think a lot about probability. Part of my job, I do a lot of statistics, I do a lot of uh, modeling, and probability is a big part of that. And there's a problem with probability that nobody talks about, in that probability is based on this concept of randomness, right? You, 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 you roll a dice, you flip a coin, and there are odds that you flip a coin, there's a 50-50 chance, odds, that you will get heads or tails. And that's a random event. Well, there's also things that are complex, you know, like the stock market is, is a complex system. You can't predict it. And if you just look at the outcome of that, <clears throat> well, before, let me step back. You can't predict it because the complexity is beyond capacity to calculate. You just can't follow all the connections and, and, and all the influences. You don't know all the variables. And therefore, it's a non-predictable complex system. And if you look at the outcome of that, you'd say it's random. But it's not random. We know it's not random. We know there are f factors that go into moving those numbers around that produce the ultimate outcome. We just can't model them. But it's not random. But it looks random. So how many other things in life look random but are actually not? When I say we're impossible, when I say that, you know the, the odds of us being here are, are are very low, that's assuming that we're a random event like a coin flipping. But we're not. We're we're the result of these various variables bouncing around and meeting up and and ultimately following a path. Interesting. Or at least I find it interesting. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Dunbar. I always want to call it Durbar. This Dunbar is nice. Good, good solid Virginia pre, which is what I was craving this morning. Not worth hunting for. You'll very rarely see me smoking one of these unicorn blends. And, and I believe this is, since this, it's an esoterica blend, I believe it is a unicorn. Um, and it's good, but it's not, it's not life-changing. You have to have it pay $400 a bag good. It's just nice tobacco.
So, in terms of shop news, I, I finished up a pipe uh, yesterday. Got to send that off to its uh, to its owner. I'll show it to you. Put it back here. <laughs> it got stuck on the stand. There we go. This, um, so it's a new stem, rather happy with the stem, uh, put a gold band on it and refinish the, uh, the stumble. And I think it came out nice. So that'll be in the mail tomorrow. And that is actually my last refurbishment. Well, it's not really a refurbishment. I only did the outsides, but you know what I mean. I've got one more pipe that I'm working on, uh, that I'm, I'm restemming, and that will be my last uh, pipe repair job for a while, at least. I got other stuff going on. Uh, been playing around with some things and making some tools. Um, got to, I've got to get my dust collection system set up again. The furnace repair guy yelled at me because there was apparently a lot of, uh, wood dust in the furnace. Not a good thing to have. He didn't actually yell. But he was he was right to point it out. So I gotta get that set up. But I've been I've been fairly busy down here and I'm happy, you know, it's it's uh it's good to get back into the the more creative aspects of uh, woodworking and pipes and things like that. So I'm I'm really enjoying it. And I will have less time because I used to, you know, meeting finished early and I had 15 minutes. So I could go and putter with something and then come back for the next meeting. Can't do that anymore. Well, I can't do that for the most part. There will be a few days, one or two days a week. I'll probably still work from home. Hmm. Stir bar doesn't want to... Dunbar, rather, doesn't want to stay lit. Or I'm done. That's a possibility, too. Might be able to get a couple more puffs out of it. So, yeah, I'll probably continue to putter around with such things and give you updates. as we go along. Uh, so that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to, uh, it's Sunday, so I'm going to take the rest of the day off. I'm not going to, not going to do very much at all. At least until my wife gets up and then she'll give me my orders for the day. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we talk again, I will look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.